I just feel like it wasn't giving, you know? Let's do it again. Hey innovators, Fancy here from Fancy's Hair Innovation. Welcome to my channel where I share my journey with you in hopes to inspire you to live life as an innovator. So today we will be talking about investing in yourself. This topic is so important to me because I consider myself to be um, what you would call a curious George. I love learning. I'm always seeking out, researching different ways to just do some self-improvement um, and just uh, work on myself. You know, sometimes I find myself in spaces where I feel like it's a little too snug and I just want to expand. I want to stretch. I want to do something new that's going to better my life. So without further ado, I'm going to get into the five ways in how you can invest in yourself. So before we actually talk about the five ways in which you can invest in yourself, let's talk about what does it actually mean to invest in yourself and why is this important? So investing in yourself basically is honestly the way you think about investing in anything. You have to give something in order to get. So it's that return on investment type of uh, I, ideal that we're thinking about here. So whether you want to learn how to uh, be a good cook, you have to invest the time, maybe the money and resources to learn how to be a good cook, whether that's through cookbooks, um, having private sessions with different chefs, so they can teach you cooking classes, things like that. So we're talking about that. Um, why is this important? It's important because investing in yourself allows you to get a greater return in life, whether that's intangible or tangible. Investing in yourself can ultimately help you earn more money, build more confidence, and overall, just create a more satisfying and balanced life. So the first way you can invest in yourself is by setting goals. Let's face it, I know. We, sometimes when we hear the word set a goal or when we hear set goals, we get kind of like turned off by it. But let's face it, setting goals is one of the major ways that you'll be able to accomplish anything in life. If you're just going through life, not knowing where you're going, how long it's going to take, the resources that you need, is this even attainable? You're going to be lost. Whenever I set a goal, I like to use the format of SMART goals. If you're unfamiliar with what that format is, SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So this format truly helps me make sure that I outline my goal, make sure that it's something specific that I can actually achieve. I measure that goal. I set some time frames and timelines within that goal also attainable is it something that it's reasonable for me to obtain or is it just such a big goal that i feel like it's out of my reach or out of my grasp and is this goal relevant to whatever it is that i'm trying to accomplish and lastly time bound what is the time frame needed to accomplish this goal so the second way which and i also think is the best way that you can invest in yourself is through exercise Daily exercise to me is so critical because not only will you start to feel good about yourself when you start to look physically better, but in, internally you'll start to feel a lot better. You, you will start to feel more energized throughout the day. You will feel that you have more brain power. You will start to feel as though your um, creativity levels are a little bit higher. And honestly, guys, you don't have to do extensive exercise. It can be as simple as taking a walk around your neighborhood, taking a jog, going to the park. Um, when I first started my fitness journey, which was a year, almost a year ago now. Oh, actually, no, it's been a year. Sorry, it's been a year. Um, and I really, really wanted to just change how I physically look and looked and how I physically felt. So um, 
yeah, here's my before and after so you guys can see. Um, I did a 30-day program. I hired a trainer. And for me, I knew that I had to make the financial investment into a trainer because I didn't grow up playing sports or anything. So I never learned how to work out per se. I never learned how to lift a weight. I never learned proper form. So it was very important for me to hire a trainer so I can be taught the proper way to do things and also be held accountable, um, you know, because I just knew that, especially if it's something new that I'm introducing into my life, I'm going to need someone to be there and kind of hold my hand through the process. And then once you teach me everything I need to know, I'm in, I'm, I'm good. I got it. So I highly recommend a great way to invest in yourself is through physical exercise daily. And I mean, even if it's just a 10 minute walk around your neighborhood, it's going to drastically help improve your um, physical well-being and also your mental well-being. Okay, number three. The third way that I actually <laughs> do a lot is learning a new skill or strengthening a skill that you already have. So there are three ways that I would like to share with you on how you can actually achieve this. So the first way is, I actually love this company. You can take a course online. They're very, very reasonable courses. It is called Udemy. I'll put the link here so you guys can see. It's udemy.com. Udemy has loads and loads of content that you can learn from. There's so many different instructors. The courses are very reasonable. I've taken courses um, that helped me strengthen my Excel skills. I've taken courses that helped me with digital marketing because I am an entrepreneur and it, these are things that I want to learn and get better at. You know, how to run an e-commerce business, um, some accounting information. Uh, I've also, because I do work in human resources, have taken a few courses on executive coaching. Um, what else? I mean, there's just... <laughs> So many different courses you can take. So if you are that type of learner where you want to go and sign up for a class, literally, um, that won't take you that long to accomplish depending on the level of course that you choose. And these prices range. I mean, I've taken courses that were literally $11. So it's very, very reasonable. I highly recommend Udemy if you want to check out some courses that you want to learn a new skill or even strengthen a skill. The second way that I particularly love to learn is through um, actually doing. So learning by actually doing. So because I am someone who uh, I would consider myself a craftswoman, I love to do things with my hands. I've been a hairstylist for a long, long time. So I do use my hands a lot and I'm, I am a crafty person. So I do like to learn through actually doing. And there are some skills that you actually, you do, you do have to do to learn. So for example, I said it before, I said it earlier in the video, but if you want to become a better cook, that's something that you have to do in order to get better at. You know, you have to actually learn how to create sauces and season properly and cut things properly and mix and, you know, check temperature. Like there's so much into cooking that you just can't read a cookbook and then uh, assume that you're gonna be a great cook. That, that it doesn't work that way. You actually have to learn by doing. So if there is a particular skill that you are looking to learn or strengthen, I highly recommend doing it over and over and over, practicing it until you get better. And then once you get to a level of where you feel good about it, then you can check that off your box and, and focus on something else. The last way I would say is a great way to invest in yourself and also learn a new skill is by learning from the great. So learn from the people that have done it before you. And a great way to do that is by reading books. I can't tell you guys how, when I started my journey of, you know, uh, transformation and I want to just become the best version of myself, the first thing I thought to do was grab a book. That was like the first thing. I love reading so much. Um, where, you know, learning from the greats to me really means taking the author's story, especially if it's an authentic story. It is um, non-fictional. They're giving you facts. They're giving you real life data. They're giving you 
the real deal. This is a great way to learn from them, learn from their past mistakes, learn um, you know, how they were able to change their mind and change their perspectives so they can achieve the things that they have in life now. So a few books that I will recommend to you and I will link them in the description below that really, really helped change my life, starting with Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. I absolutely love this book. This book um, is definitely a psychology book. They do talk about the brain. They talk about um, perception versus reality. With They talk about different habits that we create and sometimes their subconscious habits. He breaks everything down and that book literally changed my life. And I guarantee if you were on the journey of trying to better yourself and do some self-development, that is a great book that I think you should check out. And it's available on Audible as well if you're not um, like a hard book type of person. Um, another book that I read that I thought was very great and inspirational was The Power of Broke by Damon John. This book was gifted to me when I graduated from grad school and I... Um, you know, I was getting my master's and people were asking me, oh, you know, what do you want as a gift? And honestly, I, I told everyone I want books. Give me books. Give me books that's going to help me in the next phase that I'm going through in life right now. So that was a book that was gifted to me. Um, I absolutely love the story, especially again, as an entrepreneur. It is a story that will definitely give you some gems on if you are out here, um, you're just starting your business, you're bootstrapping yourself. This is some, the, this man, the people shark, he has definitely dropped gems on what things have worked, what things have not worked, um, processes and ways that he went about certain things that actually still work to this day. Um, so that's a really great book to check out. Um, for instance, one skill that I wanted to get better at was financial literacy and understanding money and building a better relationship with money. So another book that I um, sought out is called How to Get Good with Money by Tiffany the Budget Nista. So I come from a family where we weren't wealthy. You know, we come from very, very humble beginnings. And um, I grew up in, in a household where you hear the slogan, money is the root of all evil. More money, more problems. You know, rich is gonna stay rich, the poor will be poor. Like, they take in front. So I, I've i heard all these things growing up, right? So, and no no shade to my parents or anyone. Like, that. they were just um, reiterating what they were taught, you know? They were taught these things, and this was for them to survive, you know, and, and have these antiquated money systems. But... I wanted to get better at that. I wanted to learn how do I go beyond what my parents or family have taught me. So I started to pick up books and How to Get Good With, good with Money by Tiffany the Budgetista is an excellent book. Um, she gives you practical tools that you can use, um, breakdowns. She's also given inspirational stories on how she was able to get good with money. She talks about money being also a tool, but also energy and how to work with that energy. Um, so great book, great, 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 great book. The last book I'm gonna recommend on where you can learn some really great skills is called High Performance Habits by Brendan Bouchard. So this book definitely inspired me to maintain momentum on a daily basis when you have so many things going on whether it be your job your business your kids your family your social life your home you name it we have so many things going on in our worlds and there are times where we feel that type of um burnout per se so this book helps gives you tips guides um playbooks, if you will, on how to maintain that momentum, how to become or maintain being a high performer. Um, because sometimes we do get a little burnt out. We do get a little tied up in things. And sometimes we do get a little dysfunctional and unorganized. So this is a great book on how to stay on track, stay focused, and um, stay a high performer so you can see the results that you want for your life. 
Number four, I would say number four for me is definitely find a business coach or mentor. For me, especially as an entrepreneur, I can't say it enough, a business coach definitely helped me with guiding me and giving me a outside perspective on, listen, I'm gonna be transparent. This is what I have. This is what I've been doing. Now, as a business coach, they're gonna give you guidance. They're gonna give you tips. They're going to look at everything and say, what's working, what's not working. I see that you can tweak this here. Um, this is what I wanna see. They hold you accountable because they're gonna be looking for if you implemented any of the uh, changes that they suggested. Um, so a business coach is something that I think is very, very beneficial, especially if you are in business. Um, as a great way to have an advocate and um, also just someone that can provide a different insight into what you have going on and just giving you those gems, you know, those little golden nuggets that you just never thought of. And then the light bulb goes off and it's like, and everything just domino effects from there. Also a, a mentor. A mentor is very important, whether it's a professional mentor, spiritual mentor, or mentor that can help you with personal development because they're out there and I have all three of them. Um, I will say for me, having a strong network of people that are further along in their journeys than I am has definitely benefited to where I am in life and where I'm going. So I will say that definitely that, um, for instance, that professional mentor, they are someone that can coach you, give you coaching on the spot there's someone that can recommend different outlets for you to um, strengthen certain skills. For instance, um, if you, in your professional world, if you do a lot of public speaking, you know, maybe your mentor can send you different um, events and webinars where you can start to present a little bit more. You know, maybe you can go to your local Toastmasters and start public speaking a little bit better in and strengthen that skill as a public speaker. But having a mentor is someone that can um, help measure and give you metrics of where you are, you know, kind of measure your internal or professional KPIs. Um, and just honestly, again, back to that advocacy, someone that you can, that can be your advocate, someone that you can go to, to um, vent, to share things with. They can give you guidance on, you know, this is how I would work through this particular situation or have you thought about doing this? Um, I think that mentors are great. Strengthening your network is an amazing way to invest in yourself. Definitely, um, if they're not a mentor, at least someone that is well um, ahead of you, you never want to be the smartest person in the room because you're not growing. So I like to put myself in environments where I may not be the smartest person in the room. You know, I may not know this particular thing about um, tech, but if I surround myself with someone like that, eventually they will educate you and inform you and you'll become more abreast on different topics and different um just all these different aspects of what people do around the world that can help you expand your mind and grow and, and grow new perspectives, new insights on a lot of things. So that is definitely, um, sometimes it could be a financial commitment, you know, hiring a business coach or finding a mentor, um, or they can happen organically. Um, if you guys are interested, I can definitely do a video on how to obtain a mentor, what that process looks like, and help you kind of walk through that step because I've had mentors for a number of years in my life and they they come in all forms, okay? So if you want me to help you find a mentor, let me know and I'll do a video on it. Okay, everyone, last but certainly not least, number five. The fifth way in how you can invest in yourself is by giving yourself a break. Give yourself a break. You know, I definitely was someone who did not understand the importance of giving myself a break. Um, you know, I was someone who definitely worked all the time, whether it's working my job, doing hair, uh, studying for something, taking a cert, 
doing some type of side hustle and then you want to go and help people as well because i am a helper i like i love to help i'm resourceful so if i'm a bank of information or support so if there's something that my family or friends need i'm the one that's going to show up so um balancing all those things i never gave myself a break i never even thought of breaks you know thinking of giving myself a break was like no like that is just i thought i felt guilty about it but i can say i think that we all can agree that the pandemic and when we were in a global shutdown it definitely allowed us to slow down a bit give give each other give give ourselves i'm sorry a break and learn what it actually means to rest so that's something that i've learned to do and i've learned that to stop feeling guilty about it i learned that once i give myself a break it's actually investing in myself because it's giving me the energy that i need to fuel myself so i can go out out the next day and do and be the best person i can be but if i'm burnt out i'm exhausted my mind isn't right uh, my body's physically tired i can't be the best person i can be so I will say um, giving yourself a break is one of the best ways you can do that. Um, the ways I like to give myself a break is definitely by taking a walk in the park. I love to take baths. That's another way where I get to get some self-love and self-care while giving myself a break. Whether it's walking away from the computer or whatever I'm working on at the time for five minutes and going to go meditate for five minutes just to rest my brain. Um, hey who knows if i don't i'm not really a tv watcher but if you're into tv every now and again treat yourself and go binge watch a show on netflix whatever it is you have to do to give yourself a mental break a physical physical break i highly encourage doing it because at in the end the return that you receive is far greater than working yourself like you are a machine or a robot and later on you're going to end up regretting it if you god forbid run yourself into the ground now you now you have to physically um really you know work on mending yourself back to health but if you give yourself these little breaks in between i guarantee that you're going to feel much better you're going to feel recharged rejuvenated and you're going to go back out there and be able to attack your goals so guys that's all i have for you today those were the five ways in which you can invest in yourself let me know if you have some ways that I didn't mention today on how you invest in yourself. I would love to know. I, I'm going to read the comments. So please share if you have any ways that you invest in yourself, if you felt I left anything out. But anyway, all in all, thank you so much for joining me today. And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So, the, so these videos that I post can continue to get into the hands of people that need it. Thanks again, guys. And I'll see you soon.